Turner, what day is it? What day is it? What day is it, sweet pea? Is it day? Day? What day? <gasps> day 15. Huh. It's day 15 of the build, and it is a beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky. Which actually is a bad thing, so that means it's gonna be hot today, but that's okay. Van's locked. Where's the key? <laughs> What did we get up to yesterday? Oh yeah. <laughs> so we built out some of this cabinet. So the top of that is gonna be out of pine, which we bought. And we're just, that's gonna receive the other half of the bed. So the slats are gonna pull out and rest on that piece of pine that we have there. And I'm kinda gonna build like a little shelf unit in front of the fender. So it's not just a dead space. And then in the back, gonna have kind of a storage thing that you can access from the back. We'd kind of explored the idea of having the pine piece here and on hinges so you can lift it. Then we realized it's just, you only really gain this little area right here which can't really fit much because it's not very wide. I think we'll go without it and then this can still be accessed from the back when the back door is open. So yeah, I think we'll just screw it right on. What else do we do there? Gloss. Chica. Glossed, we glossed more pieces. Oh yeah, we worked on the countertop and the table. So, the countertop that goes there. I don't know if you guys remember that uh, Ikea roadside special that we found. So that's this guy. So I had to make little notches here and there and cut it down to fit, you know, obviously the space that we have it in. And then I used the, the cutoff bit of it which is here and I also plane that down and that's gonna kind of sit on there at the back and we also worked on the table so this is the underside of the table but it's coming out really nice really like the look of that plane that down I think I don't know how much 8 mil or something and then I took probably another 8 mil off the kitchen counter and after. Yeah. So you see how thick that was? It's like pretty big difference there. And so you see how it just a little planing and sanding the difference that that takes that right off. So yeah, today we're gonna do we're probably gonna try to put up some of the uh, wall pine that Kristen painted up, and we'll put a couple more coats on the, uh, on these pieces. Oh yeah, down on the ground here. So this is that piece of pine that's gonna go across the ledge in the van that the bed will sit on top of. And I might try to work on some of the electrical. I never actually finished it yet. Still have this to hook up and the breakers to put in. She's coming along. She's looking pretty good. Supervisor. Supervisor, always on our case. Mm -hmm. Turner. Yeah, I know. We'll get to work soon. So I realized I never told you guys what uh, we actually used on the pine for the clear varnish. So we went originally with uh, this stuff. Cabothane clear from Cabot's, the gloss. So this stuff is water-based, so it dries a bit quicker. It doesn't have as much smell. It's easy cleanup. But the difference with the oil, oil base is gonna make it come out a little bit shinier. Even though it's a clear, it still adds like a little bit of darkness to it. So we originally used that for the roof, or the ceiling. Why did I say roof? The rough, up on the rough, the ceiling. So what we, what happened was that we ran out of that stuff, because it's not a very big can. You have to put three coats on. What we did when we went back to buy more of it is- I saw the price. Kristen realized the price. so. This stuff from British Paints, clear varnish, water-based, gloss, all that good stuff. This is about- Basically the same, it's about half the price. Of, $21 to 44.90. dollars so. Yeah, so it's half the price. Um, is it worth double the price, especially when we just use it on the ceiling? Probably not. So far, the, the British Paints one at half the price, we did it, the second coat on this one and that one we're gonna finish off the tables. I don't know, I can't really notice a difference. Yeah, 
us, we just basically kept it simple and went with a clear varnish. Mainly because I like just kind of the natural wood color and the grain and all that, and the clear just kind of highlights that grain. So does stain, but obviously stain changes the color and makes it a different color. So if you want a darker wood, then, then go with that. So I would ask, just ask people, and even the, the people at the paint counters, just take up some cans and get a piece of wood and they'll open it for you and just paint some on and you can check it there. Cause what we did was we just bought the stain, the maple, at least we thought we were buying something different. It was a totally different color. And so we brought it, brought it here, stained it, and it was like a $55 can of stain and we basically wasted part of it and got a really dark wood that we did not want. So they ended up exchanging it for us. So thanks Bunnings, you guys are mint. We all want power, you know, power gives us great things. All I really want is just basic power for my LED lights and plugs. So what I got going here is, uh, I've shown you guys this before. I got my 60 amp MPPT charge controller, my 2500 watt inverter. So yeah, I'm just gonna wire it all up, um, see how we go. I haven't put the batteries in yet because I still have to connect the grounds and I haven't bought big enough self tappers yet to screw it to the metal. Um, so I'm gonna wire this up. I'm not an electrician, disclaimer. This is just what I did. I had an electrician tell me what to do and he's gonna inspect everything before I turn it on. So if you're not an electrician, you can you know watch videos all you want, but you should probably have a certified electrician to, uh, to do that. You guys want to see what 400 Australian dollars gets you? Let's check it out. Pretty stoked about it, but frick, it was expensive. Heavy duty. We got the leg mounts, as well as the roof bars. These guys. So those two bars will go on the roof, and then. We'll put uh, the solar panels. Solar panels are gonna get mounted onto those. As well as we're just buying online an awning. Mount onto these guys. Ooh, 400 bucks for plastic and metal. So anyone who ever said measure twice, cut once is a liar. Cause you should measure 10 to 15 times before you ever do something like that. Because that could go horribly wrong. And in this case, it was perfect. So I made a template first. I like cut some foam or cardboard you could probably use and just cut like around to fit it in. And then I used that template to mark it on the wood. And then I triple checked that another million times and then boom. Welcome to day 16 of the van build. Foley the Sprinter. We went this morning, hit up a couple garage sales, a couple G sales, got some water jugs. <gasps> some liquid nails got that, liquid you know, nails. this is $4.60 at um, Bunnings. Bunnings, yeah, so we saved there, got a couple cheap water jugs. So we're gonna return the one that we bought for 20 bucks. We got some jumper cables, case of emergency. And some other random stuff you don't and care And some about. other random stuff that you don't care about. Bit of a late start to the day, but what we want to do and what we were starting on last night was getting this area sorted out. Kind of the right half of the van. So we put on uh, some of the white wall paneling. We just kind of did secret nailing or tried to do secret nails. We just nail it into the, like the tongue side at an angle and then the next one covers it. So just trying to reduce the nail holes. Put on this kind of nice pine ledge. Kind of nice, that piece costs $34. Of course it's nice. I glossed it up. I think I glossed, glossed it, it an extra time. Yeah, girl. Looks beautiful. We're gonna put up some more wall panels. Weapon of choice for putting on the pine lining. Standard issue, pass load. It's nice and discreet. Put it in your belt, whatever. 
Awesome, I just used uh, 35 millimeter nails because if I used anything longer, it would just blast right probably into the, through the pine and then into the metal. Bent nails could be popping back through the face of the pine and then you'd, you'd be pissed. Rolling, so I just thought I'd have a little Q&A for you. How many times have you moved this box <laughs> as well as these boxes? Cause I was just wondering. Uh, I think I moved those like four times. This one I'm moving for the third time. Do it again. Do it up. Hey, look at this perfect leg hole. Is that why you built that? <laughs> Just so I could straddle it. Look at that wall, it's looking good. Cool idea that we had. We found this beauty on the side of the road um, during the hard waste collection. Key cabinet. We didn't know what we were going to do with it at the time. Um, but we're actually going to turn it sideways and it's going to go up there. So that'll be like our cupboards. And they came with these little dividing shelves that we'll use for the front doors and they'll kind of like hinge upward. Problem with the van is that everything's curved, right? So this wall has like a curve that way and then the roof has a curve like this but we want the, the front of the shelf to be square. So what I was gonna do is I'm just gonna trace out, I took the end piece off of that cabinet. It's gonna go like that. So it's gonna get cut down to fit right to the top of that white piece of pine. Um, so I'm gonna trace out the roof line and then I'm also gonna trace the back wall line so it'll have kind of a top curve and a side curve and then hopefully that'll keep the front side square. So I'm just gonna play around with it. It's gonna take a little trial and error, I think, before I get the right curve. But once I have that, I can just make the other side exactly the same. Germophobia problems. <laughs> Day 17 of the build. Today, oh, check this guy out. That's disgusting. Gnarly. What are you doing on my table? Are you gonna fall? No. Yeah. Welcome to day 17 of the beautiful build, the Foley, the Sprinter. Isn't she magnificent? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Hello. <laughs> Today we are going to turn this into our kitchen cabinet. Put the doors on it, put the doors on our bedroom cabinet. Get the roof rack up, get some painting and glossing. Yeah. Maybe the sidewall, our fold out cooker, our porta potty center console, just a few items. Everything. We're finishing everything today. It will be a 56 hour day and it will be done. It smells like varnish in here. It smells like liquid nails to be honest. Yeah, actually it does. Oh wait, liquid nails all over my shorts. Yeah, Kristen ruined her Lululemon shorts. I sat on this. I have one yeah. pair of Lululemon shorts. She sat right on the end of that liquid nails. Right in the middle. Which is basically from that moment on, those shorts <laughs> completely I'm gonna fix them. I'm gonna fix ruined. Them. <sighs> oh yeah. We finish this wall. While we finish installing it, we gotta do some dapping and some paint. But we did a pretty good job of nailing. Uh, we put up those couple pieces there. The reason there's only two is because we have up top is the cabinet, which I think I touched on with you guys yesterday. We finished it yesterday, so we modified it. See how it's kind of built with the taper at the top and then a taper at the back. It actually, we put it together, held it up there, lo and behold. Fits perfectly. So if you ever have your own furniture and you're planning to throw it out one day, maybe don't put stuff like that on it. Ahoy! 
driving. We just went and picked up a toilet. That's right. Actually, that was the most common question people that we know asked us when we were living in a van. Where well, are you gonna go to the toilet? Um, and actually this handy dandy little cupboard is gonna store, store the toilet. Now we're going to pick up a mattress. It's about an hour drive, but it's a good deal. So it's worth it, right? That's right. It's worth every kilometer. We go, here we go. Day 18, build. Kristen's already hard at work. Doing another coat of paint on the wall. The last one turned out pretty bad actually because we dapped the wall or puttied it and then we didn't sand it very well. It just did not turn out very good, but she's painting. And it's starting to look amazing. Painting after a lot of sanding. Yeah, we did lots of sanding for this one. And it's starting to look really good. We wanted to take a little break since we're down the peninsula for uh, picking up the mattress topper. We thought we'd check out a cool little place called the Pillars. We don't even know if we're on the right path right now. All right, we're in the wrong spot. It's pretty though. <laughs> we're at the Pillars. We found yeah, well-known spot. People are jumping off the cliffs here. Uh, sawdust in my shoe. Van build struggles. We just got the solar panels remounted. Spent like the entire day on it. I mounted it, then I took everything off and I lowered the brackets to make it more stealth. And I just finished and this happened. It is absolutely pouring. Woo! Look at that though. What day is it? Oh, what? <laughs> day 20. Day 20. I'm sleepy. <laughs> yeah, we're a bit tired. Uh, we were up later last night working on the van. Uh, trying to get some things done. Today we're taking it in for tinting. It's got like lots of marks and dings and stuff. Scratches. Back windows are even worse. Yeah, so we're getting that tint redone in the back of the van, getting it a bit darker as well. Just so people can't see us, stare at us while we're sleeping. <laughs> Check this out. Last night, we got these guys up. Look at that. So that was that rebuilt 
Ikea, it was a shelving unit that we turned sideways, cut it, put hinges on it. Oh, and the and kitchen yeah, one was in there. It looked real nice. And the kitchen one. Check out this soft clothes. Uh. Nice soft clothes hinges on there. We're gonna work on the bed slats, kind of the layout of it. We're gonna cut these in half just to make the spacing a bit tighter together so there isn't such big gaps. This thing's coming along, this little roller cooker thing. And we're gonna use what's left of that free table that we got. Use the, that counter for here. I kind of made a little cubby thing. So that is where our little porta potty's gonna go. Yay! Yay! Porta potty. Porta potty. Kristen's sleeping already. I'm sleepy. Check out these absolute beauty solar panels. I had them mounted up on top of the, the rhino rack and yeah, that was just a bad idea because they were sticking up like, when you looked at the van from the front, they were like, like way up here. They were up too high, I did not like it. So what I ended up doing was I kind of flipped, I flipped it around. So I put this aluminum track underneath, I put it underneath the rhino rack so that way the solar panels can sit right up, kind of flush with the, see if you look here, you can see it's nice and flush. And that way when you kind of look at it from the front or the back or even the side, it just kind of looks like part of a roof rack system. But that was kind of a hellish nightmare because it was hot, but we got them in. Yeah. Can you tell them what day it is? Can you tell them. Day 21. Day 21. Three weeks. I came to find my, my hairbrush. Yeah. But it was in the van. Yeah. So. See, we're already storing stuff in the van. So yesterday, when I was telling you guys we were going to get the tint done, and it was something we just did not want to tackle ourselves because it's, I don't know, there's a knack to it. It's like art or something. But as you we can see, there's money well spent. Guy did a beauty job. So, I don't know if you guys remember it before, it was pretty gnarly and scratched up. And just from being a trade van, it was pretty gross, but... So this guy ripped off the old tint, and he put on... We opted to go with a little bit more expensive, the heat resistant. I think it's 85% heat resistant uh, tint. And we went with 4%, uh, so it's really dark. So as you can see, like, with the other door open, you can kind of see Kristen. But when that door is closed, even from like a couple feet away or, or right up close, you can barely see into the van. Okay, show them what we've done. What else did we do? Have they seen the wall? The wall is looking really good too. Kristen did some sanding and some touch-ups. This thing was a pain yep. in the ass. Like I got two coats before we put it on, then we dapped it, sanded it, painted it again. Then the dap spots looked really terrible. And then, and then, we went to Bunnings and found out that they were out of stock when we were there before, but now they have pre-painted smooth ones. They only really need I like saw. one coat once it's done and it comes out nice and smooth. They're a little bit more expensive, but had we known that originally... I but just... paint is expensive, sanding. Yeah. I still have to fix it a little bit. But... Yeah, it actually probably works out the same and would have saved us like... That's okay. Twice That's the okay. time anyway. Yes, yeah, so you can see like the tint from the inside. It's a little bit darker, but it actually you can still get good visibility out the windows. And also shout out to Jason at Titan Smash for helping us with these doors that we had to slam before. Yeah, so this, this legend at Titan Smash, he came and um, checked out these doors for us because the, the back barn doors were just a pain. You'd have to slam them really hard and they didn't quite line up properly. Took it to him. The doors closed pretty nice now and the weather seal lines up good. So yeah, he helped us out quite a bit with these back Show doors. The bed. Ooh, even better, yesterday, we finished the bed. Uh. Look at that. Most of the wood, or actually all of the wood that we used on this, was uh, the 140 mil planks that we found on the hard waste collection day. 
So it's all recycled wood that we found basically. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's, it turned out really good. So we just cut them, I ripped them in half because they were double wide and it just left too big a gap. So cut them all in half, cut them down to length. Um, we kind of laid them all out. So any of the ones that were a bit twisted or warped were the ones that we screwed down. So we screwed every second one down to the bed. And then we used the good, nice flat ones, obviously, for the actual pullout part. And then once we had that all laid out, we just took this nice piece of pine and just nailed it to every loose piece. And we'll nailed and screwed and glued and all that good stuff. And then when you pull it, obviously it just pulls out every second piece. And it sits nicely on this little ledge that we made. And we put these up. So we had a pretty good day yesterday. So we got the kitchen cabinet up, bedroom one we already had done. When I was telling you guys I made it too big, as you can see this one comes out much further because we actually have the space. This one I didn't make it small enough originally, so when you're standing at the sink. I did the test, if you're brushing your teeth. Yeah, we did the, it was too close. So I cut it down and kind of tucked it in behind the, the lining. So that gave it a lot more space. We got the doors are all ready to go on them. The hinges are already mounted. So we got soft close hinges. We just gotta put the doors back on. What you doing there, mate? Hooking up ground cables. In tight spaces. <laughs> <laughs> 